This dining table was propped up in the back of my local Salvation Army thrift shop a few months ago and I knew by the $30 price tag on it that they did not know what they had under all of this white latex paint. Hello, Katie here from Salvaged by K. Scott with another furniture makeover. I can tell by these massive scrolled feet and the overall thick, chunky style of this that it's an American Empire style table. That, along with the hand forged nails and hand cut screw heads, means that it's from the mid 1800s and my guess is that this 48-6 marked on the underside means that this table was made in June 1848. I can also see from under there that the tabletop at least is tiger oak. It would have originally had a leaf so that it could be extended to fit more guests and I imagine that that has been missing for some time but the crank mechanism on the bottom to open and close this table is really cool. I can see through the paint that this table has been through some things but I don't really know what I'm going to find underneath. I'm hopeful that I'll uncover some good wood to refinish but if not it might just need to get a newer cleaner paint job. The top of the table attaches to the base with these lag bolts, but I'm going to just tighten my drill chuck over these and pop it into reverse to remove them for now, just so that I can lay this flat while I'm working on it. I decided that the quickest way to get through this white paint was to use my carbide scraper. And after the first few swipes, I could see that there were a few more layers, a kind of taupey gray and then a warm white layer before the oak underneath. I wasn't sure though if this tabletop was solid or a thin veneer of quarter sawn oak. I knew from a missing chunk on the apron of the table that there was veneer there and the wood grain around the edge was going in the opposite direction to the top so that tells me that that's a veneer as well. So I was being as careful and cautious as I could be so that if this top surface is also a veneer I'm not going to be damaging it. After getting some more of the paint off of the edge banding, it was clear that this veneer was beyond repair. It looked like it had already been patched a few times. Large sections of it were bubbled up and it was full of stones like it had been rolled across the ground. So knowing that I wasn't going to be able to salvage that meant that I didn't need to be so nice about getting the paint off of here. While I pondered how I was going to go about getting the veneer off of the apron and that table edge, I went ahead and just started sanding the rest of the paint and stain off of the top with a 120 grit abrasive. I was very pleasantly surprised that this top was in such good condition with just really a few minor dents and scratches. I went ahead and sanded most of the paint off of the edge and then I could clearly see that the top was totally solid, which means that I was safe to sand and scrape as much as I needed to, but in an effort to avoid the task of peeling the veneer off of the rest, I decided just to move over to the base for a bit. I used the same scraper and sandpaper to work away at that paint too. Again, I was very pleasantly surprised to see that this pedestal column had the same quarter sawn oak on it, but through some big cracks down it, I could tell that this was definitely a veneer and it was thin, so I needed to be extra cautious to not sand or scrape through that by accident. These feet 
however, just like the top, are solid oak. So I just switched up between my scraper and some coarser 80 grit sandpaper to get through the paint on here. I should also mention that I did test this table for lead before I started working on it. I knew that the top layer of paint was a newer latex just from the plasticky feel of it, but I wasn't sure about the layers underneath that could possibly contain some lead. I personally don't work on pieces that contain lead in their paint or stain just because I don't want to put myself or my family at risk by creating lead dust in our environment and I definitely don't want to pass any lead contamination onto anyone else's family, but this piece was totally lead free. Before I did any more sanding, I decided to break out my little dental picks here and pluck out as much of the paint from the grain and any small dents as I could. This table is 175 years old though, and it's had a few makeovers already, so I'm not going for perfection here. It's going to have some character, and that is totally okay. Since I couldn't avoid it anymore, I flipped the top over and started working on the veneer removal. I sanded away the paint and found a ton of old patches and filler that really solidified my decision to just completely remove all of this veneer from the apron and the edge. So I grabbed my little painter's tool here and peeled up everything that was already loose. And then I just kind of used it like a chisel with my hammer to get all of the rest off. I thought about finding some new veneer to put on here, but after looking online, I ended up deciding that the expense of it probably wasn't necessary. The wood under the apron veneer is maple, I think. And since you can't really see that when you're standing or sitting at the table, I'm pretty sure that once I get everything stained, it's not gonna be noticeable. Once I had all of that veneer removed, I just kept picking and scraping and sanding all the little details until I had all of that paint removed. While I had the base upside down though, I did notice that there was a massive crack running all the way between two of the feet. And if I didn't address this, this half of the base would eventually just snap right off. I grabbed some half inch dowels out of my wood collection and borrowed a half inch drill bit from my husband to stabilize this problem. I just drilled some holes on an angle right through where that crack was. I let gravity take some wood glue down through all of the big gaps and then glued the dowel pieces into the holes that I had drilled. had two dowels kind of on each end and I clamped it all up to hold it in place while the glue set. But after I got the clamps on there and looked at it a little more, I decided to add a few more dowel pieces coming from the other direction just for some extra insurance.
I left that rig to set up overnight and then the next morning when I came back out to work I used my Dremel multi-tool with a flush cut blade to trim off all of the excess dowel pieces. that repaired I was ready to move on to filling the cracks in the pedestal with some oak colored wood filler. While that dried, I started the process of my finished sanding. Since I'd done my initial paint removal sand with 80 grit on a few spots and 120 on the rest, I needed to sand those 80 grit spots with the finer 120 to start smoothing things out. And I did a bit more of a thorough sand of the 120 grit on the tabletop as well. I wanted to see if I could fix these two deeper scratches a bit more than my sander was getting done by steaming them. Sometimes with scratches and dents where the wood has been compressed, you can actually rehydrate the wood fibers and plump them back up to resolve that damage with steam. So I put a wet cloth over the scratches and got my iron as hot as I could and then just tried to steam those scratches but I don't think it really worked well on these. It did make a slight improvement, but not really what I was looking for. Again, I had to remind myself, this table is 175 years old. It's gonna have some flaws. I had a few other little spots on here that I wanted to fill in before I did my last sand. So I did that and then I went back over to the base. The same procedure here, 120 grit to sort of smooth everything and get all of the wood to a consistent color. And then I moved up to a 180 grit for my final smoothing sand. Once I was happy with everything, I wiped down the table with some plain old water just to get an idea for how it would stain and try and highlight any swirlies that might need correcting from my sanders. They can be really hard to spot on the dusty, lighter wood color, so this really helps bring those out. Everything looked good, so I grabbed a tack cloth to pick up any dust that might be hanging on here, and then I got out my pre-stained wood conditioner. This is a clear kind of light sealant that is just gonna close up the surface of the wood a bit so that when I apply my penetrating wood stain, it absorbs nice and evenly across all of the wood. This tiger oak or quarter sawn oak just has a streaky blotchy look by nature so I'm not 100% sure that this wood conditioner step is necessary on here but I'm just going to do it anyways. I gave it a good stir and then used a clean t-shirt rag to rub it onto all of the surfaces. I like to just get it on there and then I go back and smooth it out in the same direction as the wood grain. And after about five minutes, I grabbed another clean rag and just wiped up any excess that hadn't absorbed. After the wood conditioner had had about 30 minutes to dry, I started getting ready to stain. I think this red toned English chestnut color is gonna be pretty comparable to the original warm wood finish that this table would have had. Again, with another lint-free rag, I'm just gonna wipe this over each surface in the direction of the grain, and then I like to just roll over my rag to pick up any excess as I go. You can see just how splotchy this apron piece gets as the stain absorbs into the wood, which confirms my suspicions that this is maple. Maple is just a wood that's notorious for not staining nicely, but it is what it is and I'm not gonna stress about it. I 
ended up doing two coats of stain to get the richness and depth of color that I was looking for. And then I grabbed some paint just a tiny bit to camouflage the original bits of filler that are in some of the larger flaws on these chunky big feet. All of this needs to dry really thoroughly so I left this overnight again and then I was ready to seal everything up. This wipe on poly is what I prefer for big wood surfaces like this. I find it to be really effective but more importantly it's really easy to use. I grabbed another fresh rag and after shaking up this can of poly, I just poured some out and used the rag to work it into the surface. On my first coat of this stuff, I like to really rub it down into the wood grain and then I just give it a final wipe, you guessed it, in the direction of the wood grain. This stuff needs three to four hours of dry time in between coats and since it's a thinned out version of a regular polyurethane, I find it needs three to four coats for decent protection. So after my first two coats had dried, I rubbed it down with some 600 grit, which is a super fine sandpaper, just to knock back any little bits of dust that had landed in it while it was wet or any wood fibers that had popped up. And then I put on another two coats. This is an oil-based poly, so it will amber or yellow slightly over time. That means it's great for a traditional stained finish like this because it will just accentuate that warm wood grain with time, but it is not good for painted finishes. I know the table originally had some casters on it and I just happened to have a set of four that fit perfectly in these spots. I clicked those in place and just had to put the table back together. I screwed the lag bolts back into the tabletop and then used some new washers and lock nuts to hold everything in place. And here is the finished 175-year-old American Empire Tiger Oak table. Thank you so much for watching today. If you liked this makeover, make sure to check out some more like it here and I will catch you all next time.